Welcome to Buddha at the Gas Pump. My name is Rick Archer, and my guest today is Sharon Landry. Yeah, yeah, so glad to be here, Rick. <clears throat> I interviewed Sharon a couple of years ago, and then a couple of months after that interview, I came to a retreat with her down in Missouri. And this year I decided to come again. Um, it's close, the price is right, <laughs> and I got a lot of benefit out of that last one. I noticed tangible benefits for six months, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. and not, well, that, not, that pretty good. not that they didn't continue, but <laughs> it's like, I, to full confession here, I have this ni lifelong habit of kind of picking at my fingers, you know, nervous energy, and, <laughs> and I'm on the computer all the time, and I get a little vata deranged, if you know Ayurvedic terms. And that totally went away after that retreat, and it, it started to creep in again after six months, so I figured I'd better come again. Get a repeat. <laughs> get them fixed a up. Reset. Although it's, it's a lot less than it used to be. So. Yeah, that's good. So, measure of my degree of enlightenment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's appropriate for this interview, but I have always remembered we had a partial kind of conversation at the retreat, and I always kind of kept something over here that I wanted to share. Okay. And, uh, but you want to start I, with that? I don't think it's appropriate for... Oh, this. come on. No, uh, I really don't. All right, now you've got everybody like... <laughs> 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 yeah, but it happens like that sometimes, you know. It's like you, you're with someone and something pops in and there's like an informing or mm -hmm. an assistance. But yet, for whatever reason, the opportunity didn't present itself yeah. for it to be fully given. Mm -hmm. And um, my memory is like this long. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, like a goldfish, right? Exactly. Yeah. And yet, there's certain things that will stay crystal clear in my memory. Hmm. And it's always in some way with this kind of an exchange. Yeah. Of, um, you know, hopefully of being of benefit in some way. Well, I'm a pretty public person and pretty difficult to embarrass. So <laughs> if anything comes up during the interview that you think maybe I should say this, maybe not, you can say it. I won't okay. care. Yeah, well, I'm that way too. So, yeah. you, you know, go for it. Okay. Good. So um, I listened to our first interview uh, on the way down here today in the car. And I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I thought, wow, I was better at this back then. I mean, I, <laughs> asking all these questions that I, how did I come up with that? But um, I had fun. Yeah. So I don't have like a, you know, a, a really clear agenda for what we're going to do today differently that'll make this distinct from the first interview, but I think we'll be able to just wing it and all too. kinds of good stuff will come out. We won't totally repeat ourselves from the first time. I do too. Yeah. You know, one of the things, and maybe you've already written this down, is that I was interested in is, especially in the non-dual community, how has it matured? Because mm -hmm. it really has. I'm sure you're seeing that, aren't you, in your I am. interviews with people? Yeah. And, um, I don't know. How are you seeing it? You know, and I, if I look back, uh, our first kind of formal introduction, and you and I have talked about this, with, was, was Jean Klein. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that was... Your first formal introduction to spirituality, you're saying? Not spirituality, oh. to the non-dual. To the non-dual, okay. And um, so it was very, um, almost a, a formal kind of a dance, right? You know, it was... And, and there were certain ways of um, presenting it um, that... Um, mm, in some ways, I don't know quite how to say this, was a little bit one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. You know, there's emptiness, there's stillness, there's no, there's nobody here, there's nowhere to go, there's nothing, you know, yeah. all of that. I've heard right? a lot of that. Yeah. Exactly. And all's true. But uh, what I've observed now, just watching it through, you know, that was 25 years ago, is a much more of a humanness you know it's 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 coming through the human life mm -hmm. right it's not separate which for thousands and thousands of years you know it was all kind of separated out um, that there's much more of um, um, an allowance and a tolerance for the unique voice to come through rather than it has to look this way it has to sound this way mm -hmm. you know yeah. Um, it's uh, love and life and 
all the experiences of that are much more open to and, and allowed and included. Mm -hmm. um, love is coming up in a way that I've never heard. I mean, my background mostly is, is Buddhism. Yeah. And you don't talk about love in Buddhism much, right? Someone told me that a few weeks ago. They said there's actually a phrase, there's no love in Zen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> compassion. Yeah. But Although you, the Buddha was regarded as very compassionate, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But not in the way that somehow, I don't know, maybe it's a Western interpretation, I don't know. But anyway, love, love is much more included and it's showing up in people's lives and it's opening up um, deep conditioning and uh, deep kind of a fearful rigidity in personalities in a, a very beautiful and, and quite easy way. Mm -hmm. uh, people seem to be more open to uh, recognizing their nature more through love and kind of a, a support like uh, aligning to the current of life. Um, rather than where most of us, it was usually pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we learn through suffering. And I'm seeing that people are more moved and opened by, by love, hmm. by informing. That's interesting. You know, I was a student of Marshim Hesh Yogi for many years, and he had a, a kind of a outline of stages of consciousness or states of development that he, I th it was a road map. And uh, I think, they're, like all roadmaps, it didn't provide maybe as much detail as mm -hmm. the actual territory mm -hmm. if you were to explore it, but it was helpful. Mm -hmm. And one thing he always they said, are. yeah, one thing he always said was that self-realization is f really the beginning, not the end, of, of, of something really significant happening. And he said it's the foundation upon which you can really begin to appreciate creation and appreciate, and, and for the heart to really grow. Said so before yeah. self-realization, the heart really can't grow much because if it were to do so, it would be like a small pond trying to rise up in big waves. It would only stir up the mud at the bottom. Ah, and, uh, yeah. But once that depth has been established, then the heart can begin to rise in tidal waves without stirring up any mud. And, um, and the appreciation can grow and grow and grow to the point where you begin to have a really significant desire to know the Creator, to know God. Mm -hmm. And that you know, then that desire becomes significant, it becomes mm -hmm. meaningful. Mm -hmm. And when it becomes significant enough, then he said it was like s an artist who hears that there's someone in, in some town who really appreciates his work, where very few people do. And he keeps hearing, this guy really gets what I'm trying to do. The artist will come and knock at that guy's door to meet him because he wants ah, to meet someone who can appreciate his work. So he said at a certain point, God will reveal himself to you. Yeah. And the and we you know we hear stories of Ananda Maima or mm -hmm. some of these great mm -hmm. saints who yeah. just seem to be such exemplars of love who just seem to be have oceanic oceanic love yes, exactly and you know perhaps we could see them as uh, pioneers uh, you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as indicators of yeah. where um, a yeah. larger population of What's us might possible. might be heading yeah mm. yeah. Yeah, beautifully said. Mm. Yeah, I, um, I, there was a point where here, um, it, there was a little bit of, um, what's the word, confusion maybe, because there were such deep, deep recognitions, true recognitions, you know, essential shifts of identity. And yet, you could look at their lives and the way they were dealing with each other and their mates and their friendships and their community, and... <laughs> still schmucks. Still schmucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you just started to watch and wait, and then, like you just said, mm -hmm. the self, the, the self-realization really is the beginning. Yeah. And if it's allowed, it will move through the, the life in this wise and unique and perfectly designed for this body-mind structure. Mm. If there's no grasping, right, of the last concept or the last experience or how it should be or what one has read, it, it, the, the wisdom is, is stunning. And if there is grasping, it will be let go eventually. Something will cause one to let it go, I think. I mean, it's sort of like there's a force of evolution. There is, and, though I was, I'm surprised at, at the length of 
Well, we, Resistance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Jesus said you can't pour new wine into old wineskins. Maybe that's it. And, and if there is this huge infusion of consciousness that comes with self-awareness, self-realization, yeah. yeah. and if the wineskin is still kind of old, mm -hmm. then you need a new wineskin. And obviously that it doesn't does. necessarily mean dying, it, it means, but it probably transmutation. Yeah. And a lot of times people say when they have uh, a profound awakening that they really start to go through the ringer oh. you know, after that. I see that more often than not. Though I must say, and you and I were kind of talking about that a little bit before we started, that there's a gentler, lighter, kind of easier way now I think that people are moving through that embodiment phase. Mm. Uh, well, we were talking about our generation having gone through the 50s and the 60s and, uh, you know, a lot of the casualties that, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know, I mean, I was almost a casualty myself, uh, at least one of the walking wounded for a while, but so we were like shock troops mm -hmm. that kind of came mm -hmm. in when things were much more dense than they are now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that is the sense it was much more dense. Because for a while I was starting to watch people because my particular recognition um, when the essential shift happened, it was like a bomb went off. Mm. I mean, it was huge and it was, you know, profound and it was, you know, the whole thing that you hear about. Um, and now I see people, it's just much gentler and just easier and especially the young people coming in, you know, they just have these very genuine, beautiful shifts yeah. of identity. And it's almost like they just kind of go, literally wake up, they just kind of go, oh. Mm -hmm. And then they just start their lives from that. Yeah. There's not a lot of confusion. But, um, so that's the great good news. I think that's a huge shift in the last 15 to 20 years. Well, you know how when you go to a satsang or something with Adyashanti or some, some really great teacher, um, generally there's an atmosphere that's mm -hmm. quite palpable, you know? Yeah. It's thick, you can almost cut it with a knife. Uh, yeah. And it, it can build up even more during the course mm -hmm. of a retreat or something. Yeah. Well, it seems that, and many, I think people listening to this will ha have had that experience and understand it, but there's a sort of an ambient collective consciousness, mm. like a field Absolutely. effect, a field Absolutely. of consciousness. That's the gift yeah. of coming together. Right. And so where is the limit of that field? Um, does it just end at the windows, you know? I mean, obviously it could be more, must be more concentrated mm -hmm. in a situation like that, but it must also Absolutely. Uh, spread. Absolutely. You know? So if we look at the it 1950s feeds. during the Cold War mm -hmm. and contrast that with today, mm -hmm. there's still a lot of problems, but it seems like the ambient field throughout the entire yeah. world has Definitely. become, or has risen or become lighter or whatever. I think there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And those that can see those things talk about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Fortunate, huh? Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. And that we get to witness it. Um, you know, you have a long spiritual history, as, as I do. And, um, you know, hearing that the chances of this recognition and living it was so rare you know, that at least here the movement wasn't so much towards enlightenment, it was just some um, very potent movement towards what I thought was union with God. Mm -hmm. But enlightenment was never even in the mix. But the longing and the movement, maybe it was for you because it was within your language more. It's a terminology thing. But here it was just, you know, yeah. it, was a, it was the first thing I remembered. Yeah. And all the way through my life, but to, to witness at this point literally hundreds and thousands of people that at least have made the essential shift of identity. Yeah. I mean, it's unfathomable. Yeah. I think we've sort of gotten used to it, but if you really stand back and look in this extraordinary short period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, nature abhors imbalance. <laughs> and there's a, there's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita where, um, I forget how it goes, it's something about Lord Krishna says that when, when a dharma prevails, I take birth. 
when, when things get too bad, then mm -hmm. you know, the divine has to come to uh, reset the balance. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, by certainly there have been bad times in the Middle Ages, all the horrible things that people did mm -hmm. to one another and the world wars, but now we've gotten to the point where we could actually snuff out life on Earth, or at least That's human right. life. I mean, it would be exactly. fine for the cockroaches, but, you know. Yeah. But uh, we've really, I mean, there's a yeah. new report that, uh, you know, at the rate Greenland is melting by 2050, the sea levels may rise 20 feet, mm -hmm. which would pretty much inundate all, most of the major cities in the world, which mm -hmm. would result in huge, and, and, and there will also, also be huge disruption of agriculture, and, yeah. and you know, uh, we can go on, you can listen I to know. whole lectures on, on global warming, but it seems like the threat is dire, mm -hmm. and so what would be yeah. nature's yeah. response? It would be right. that, you know, not Lord Krishna necessarily, but the divine, uh, you know, in uh, coming and infusing uh, itself into collective consciousness so as to... And that we're all connected. Yeah. Right. That's right. the only antidote. Right. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. And people like yourself are, mm -hmm. you know, happy, willing participants in that mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think the, 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 the maturation of the essential shift and then it has to come back for itself, right? It, it has to move through the body, mind, and it has to illuminate all that has not been touched mm. by this love, by this nature, right? Mm -hmm. That's That seems to be what, what happens, if allowed. Yeah. Um, and, and then there's a sense, and I'm, I'm just speaking of my experience and what I've observed by talking with hundreds and hundreds of people, is something begins to, out of the stillness, out of something that is the, the, the constant, something begins to permeate literally everything, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And it recognizes itself in literally everything. Mm. You know, it was one of the Buddha's main teachings is, um, it's, it's the true interconnectedness. Yeah. But it was not what we thought intellectually. It's this actualization, it's this being, it's this living of it. And then, how can we destroy the earth? How can we right, tear it's, down it's other races? It's our flesh and blood. It's, so it's, our, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's that. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. It's that, you know, it's, it's the it's the isness, the essence, the suchness, the beingness, and so the whole way of moving becomes really quite different. It isn't a morality. It just simply doesn't move in a way that is separate and destructive. Mm. It's before, right? Morality, being good people, mm -hmm. being conscious. I mean, all being conscious and good helps, but this is before. This is the... Um the fuel which fuels consciousness. Absolutely. And this and is goodness. the fuel. Be yeah. Perfect. No man is an island. Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Exactly. So what you said actually exactly. gives us a practical um, illustration of how, th how higher consciousness might result in solutions to offset global warming, for instance, yes. or yeah. you know, child pornography and slavery yeah. and all the horrible things that happen. Because if you see things as other than me, yeah. You know, then you, you, you know, can you rationalize do what you want with it. You can do what you want. Yeah, it's yeah. just dead matter. That's but right. if you begin to see it as, yeah. you know, identical with me on a deep level, mm -hmm. then you would no more damage the environment than cut one of your fingers off or something. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, maybe it was the only antidote that is possible for this kind of um, destruction. You know, we've taken it. As far as it's gonna go. Yeah, the pendulum has swung. As far as Gotta it's swing gonna back. go. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. I'm glad this theme is coming up. It's, it seems to be coming up in a fair number of my interviews these days, and I suppose, and and I see it also in, in the kind of the spiritual community. A lot of people, like at this conference, the Science and Non-Duality Conference, there are speakers who are, who are getting up and, you know, uh, talking like David Loy, Buddhist teacher, uh, talking very fervently about the. You know, spiritually, and Llewellyn Von Lee just wrote a book about spiritual ecology. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I'd like to read that. Yeah, it's like great. his work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, good. Well, and this kind of relates to what you were saying good. in the beginning, where, it's the you great know, good news. maybe a couple decades ago, teachers were just talking about absolute 
nothing, Absolutely. nothing going on. Empty. You know, all that. Nothing matters. Yeah. No one's there. You know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Which now people are true. saying, well, how does this relate to global warming? Or how exactly. does this relate to, exactly. you know. Exactly. My partner, my, my, my children, my, the food that I eat, it, it's all one thing. I mean, we all bought into it's all one thing, but, but it took a while for that to yeah. really permeate. I think some people hearing this might say, you're getting sidetracked, you know, stick to the essence, stick to the core. Yeah. Uh, that's what's, and you're just going to get yourself off on tangents. But I feel that this, this spirituality that we're all so, you know, hot and bothered about has practical implications. And inevitably... It includes everything. It includes everything. And it, it uh, is actually the, the sort of the... It's what we're looking for in terms of solving yeah. a lot of these problems. It's not like Absolutely. the politicians are going to solve them. <laughs> oh, right. Or, you know, we're going to check out, so, you know, the poor slobs are going to have to deal with it. Or whatever yeah. it was that we thought. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, we're all going to send to heaven and be yeah, exactly. the chosen ones. And, exactly. Yeah. And um, so something about, in fact, it's, it's, it's the ordinariness. It's the, it's the everything. There's nothing that it's not. I think that that's what basically we all incarnated for hmm. right yeah it's it's no longer separated out it's no longer the transcendence and the material it never was and maybe we had to do that in order to um because it was so dense right you had to step out of it but i think now you know as jesus was saying you know it's heaven and earth are one hmm. you know it, it's this is it right here that that deep, constant, beautiful, the Tibetans call the view or the the silence that permeates everything, but it does not negate or exclude anything. Yeah, and speaking of Jesus, I mean, a lot of saints, um, you, by example, have shown that it's not just about your own subjective experience. Uh, it's about you know loving people and feeding them or clothing them Absolutely. or healing them or you know whatever they may need on a very mundane level mm -hmm. you know you don't just if they're hungry you don't just say oh close your eyes let's meditate you yeah. say here have some food <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about meditation or something yeah exactly yeah. so and again yeah. it's not the the helper mode that was another phase right, I mean it's right. good to help people if mm -hmm. you can but it's it's that you're not separate from them. Yeah. That's what really I think is starting to arise collectively. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's you know, some nice people idea. who are just in helper mode without that sense of, of yeah. unity get right. burned out. They you do. Know, or depressed or whatever. Or the missionary thing, you know, where yeah. you kind of, you know, created, you imposed right. on another, you know, culture. Yeah. Which is not to say that, it's not to diminish the helpers in any way. I mean, Doctors Without Borders and all these great no, no, things. No. So the people are no, wonderful. No. I totally admire what they're doing. Yeah. But, no, um, no, no. Yeah. It's just that there's, that there's that difference between it flows and moves mm. because it recognizes what is. Yeah. And the other is, I have something here that you don't. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so it's separate just in its, you know, in the way that it moves. Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, no, um, none of that's negated. I think Mother Teresa actually had that orientation, if I, as I recall, where she saw herself Christ. as feeling, feeding Christ and bathing Christ and you know, just right. everything she was doing, she was serving the body of Christ. That's right. Here we are in a Catholic monastery yeah. facility. <laughs> and that's their um, uh, motto here, everyone is um, received as Christ. Mm, great. Yeah. yeah. And there's a deep significance to that. There's a deep significance. Love your neighbor that. as yourself because your neighbor is yourself. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it all starts to, you know, be recognized with what we've, what we're really raised with and uh, what we've heard in these sacred writings. Mm -hmm. It all starts to go, oh, it isn't just this beautiful idealism, it's the actuality. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So going back to our original beginning of the maturation of the non-dual that's what i'm seeing nice now there's a struggle going on there of course you know in what way well you know the hardliners oh, you right. know that it's going to be like going i was this saying way. Like off, on a, off on a tangent yeah. that's right yeah. or you know the ones that you know it's only everything and you know silence is nothing but you know there's there's this unfolding this revealing that's going on 
that's happening I don't know how to say this exactly there are wonderful teachers that have discovered that within themselves and so they're sharing that mm -hmm. but what I'm seeing is the quote individual unfolding it's revealing itself and so you can't negate it you can't buy into the Advaitist view or the everything view or you, you it, it's true it's revealing itself so you find the truth and the actuality here mm. and then it may be confirmed by certain teachers that you're drawn to or certain writings you know that you're interested in yeah revealing itself is nice I mean quoting the Gita again there's a verse in there which says the self reveals itself to itself it does I mean, what else can how, how else how can it else? be because exactly it, it's not like it's something that you can stand apart from because exactly. who's standing apart from it <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and so there's this sort of infusion from within you it, know a bubbling up that's a uh, I have to write that down infusion from within that's exactly what happens yeah and like sap in a tree kind that's of that's right and you it's don't natural. see the sap in the tree necessarily but you start to see oh the leaves are getting greener the buds are coming out and perfect there, there must be sap <laughs> perfect metaphor yeah yeah and even one within one's own life i mean uh yeah. i think it was saint paul to the corinthians said that uh the, the kingdom of god sneaks up like a thief in the night um you don't it doesn't come from without that's um, right. doesn't come with bells and whistles it's this That's like right. this subtle infusion exactly yeah exactly and so just it's that simple turning in and not comparing yourself with any anything you've read which mm -hmm. is challenging you know because we all love those stories yeah and not comparing yourself with anyone that you know that's in this unfolding and then just that deep listening and then naturally and beautifully and perfectly it will come forth here hmm. it's called forth it reveals itself yeah. whatever you want to call it um, and so when this starts to happen happening massively then you know those old ideas that were still holding a position even though they called themselves non-dual hmm. they were holding a strong position right it has to break up I mean there are those and holding that maybe that's their job but massively something else is happening yeah and it's including everything it's including life as it is and at the same time the silence the stillness the constancy you know that is the only constancy everything else dies and births and creates and dies again right yeah there's something you said uh, towards the beginning that reminded me of something I'd like to talk to you about, which is that, you know, you're talking about John Klein a couple of decades ago and, and how the emphasis was and still is with some teachers on absolute silence mm -hmm. and nothing's happening and all that. And of um, course it's true. Yeah, very true. Uh, but it's, I thought of it in terms of like the analogy of an ocean where you might say, yeah, there's the ocean, flat, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of water there. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you start really getting familiar with the ocean, there are millions mm -hmm. of kinds of fish, and seaweed, and right. corals, and all kinds Absolutely. of currents, and all kinds of interesting things happening within the ocean. Yeah. And so the, the oh. point I'm alluding to here is that within consciousness, there's a lot going on. Mm. And everything. Yeah. And yeah, everything. And if consciousness is really unbounded, as it's mm -hmm. supposed to be, then obviously this room is within consciousness this planet is within consciousness yeah. this galaxy everything yeah. is within consciousness yeah. and not only on the observable level mm -hmm. the ordinary observable level but there are, are strata upon strata of mm -hmm. subtler levels of realms we could say of stuff that's going on and it's all within consciousness and physics provides a nice analogy if not description of it with its description of levels and going mm -hmm, all the way down to the mm -hmm. string level the vacuum state and all that but um, I wonder if you care to just comment upon the spiritual implications of that that thought well again and um, that's that's what's discovered if if one just listens here listens deeply is that the the, the vast body the vast oneness 
um, it it includes you know using that analogy that the, the silent floor yeah. you know where, which is always silent and um, as you said so beautifully all the different you know uh, uh, expressions of self um, the fish the currents the the movement of the waves you know it's silent sometimes and still and sometimes it's chaotic and you know but yet it's not ever affected the silence is not affected um, n nothing that ever takes place um, fundamentally affects the body of, of consciousness so that's discovered yeah if if one just comes home and listens that's discovered and so one can see that something may arise say um, for whatever reason maybe it's my age I'm around a lot of people that are losing their parents mm. just everywhere I look mm -hmm. and um, so there's this expression of, of grief but does that expression of grief affect at all the body of consciousness the silence can the silence and this grief simultaneously exist in the same body? So there's no denial. We, we, we sort of thought we had to deny certain parts of the human life, right? Because it wasn't whatever, spiritual or, you know, it was part of a dream or, you know, whatever. <laughs> but there's no denial when you open to the vastness of your own nature. All can happen simultaneously and grasped and holes do, do you hear yeah, yeah. what I'm saying mm -hmm. so it's a it's it's the perfect analogy yeah because that's what you discover right if you really are the totality then totality means it includes everything and the whole thing the whole yeah. human spectrum um, and it also includes the recognition that the human spectrum is like that. Yeah. True. Right. I mean, we know that even from like physiology, our, our, our senses perceive this much of the electromagnetic field and that's exactly. what visible light is. We perceive that much sound and a dog can hear up there and so on, bats. Right. And, but exactly. this is also true in terms of not only the senses, but well, well the cities you know you right. and I were talking a little bit about the cities you mm -hmm. know how they just naturally happen yeah and cities well, we it mean isn't because you're mad oh yeah please explain well the cities from my viewpoint is just that the spectrum again of the the ability to perceive right so you perceive subtle sounds you perceive sub mm -hmm. subtle energies maybe subtle life forms mm -hmm. that you know we were taught that didn't exist right um, and and so all of a sudden, you know, all of that is is available. It it doesn't mean anything. It just means that before we had you know this little tiny sense door, and now it's as as vast as space that yeah. contains everything. So uh, they're not magical, or they're not miraculous, or anything. Nope. And some pick them up, and some are wired that they don't, and. You know, it's where your attention goes and what your what your lineage or your karmic background is, you know? Yeah. Um, I have something to say about that. Before I do, though, I just want to elaborate a little bit more on this ocean metaphor, which is that, you know, maybe self-realization is like realizing, oh, I'm the ocean. I'm not just a wave. Yeah. I'm, I'm the ocean. Yeah. Okay. But then, uh, then... And I'm that that the ocean arises from. Right. right, but uh, but how much is con well depending on what we want to do with the metaphor. But you know how much can there be within a wave? Not too much. Maybe a fish every now and then, or uh, a little I bit of seaweed or something. Mm -hmm. But then yeah. w within the whole ocean, there's right. all, all possibilities. There's all possibilities. And so once you realize they're, they're, you're the ocean, then the possibility for exploration has actually just begun. Yeah. You know, that's not that's like, right. okay, I'm done on the ocean. It's that's like, all right, right, whoa, what's in here? Yeah. <laughs> what can I discover? Yeah. That's a beautiful way of saying it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so that relates to the cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And yet there's nothing that attaches to any of it. Right. Either. Sure. Because right? if it does, then you're back into wave mm -hmm. status. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And there can be a vacillation or between, oh, I'm only a wave or on the ocean. Oh, darn it, I'm just a wave again. There can be that phase. I think that goes on really much longer than most of us would, would actually like to uh, say or even admit. 
but here, and I don't know even know how quite to describe that, is there something that has so dropped out, and that's really since you and I've talked to each other, that that coming and going n no longer takes place mm. at all, subtly Sadly. or not subtly. So that too, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's sort of interesting how you think, this is it? <laughs> no. Mm. That falls out. And then, this is it? No. That falls out. Yeah. And then something deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and more still and more Yeah, to no end, probably. Well, you know, I think it can't, of course, it's infinite, so it's impossible. Yeah. And yet there was something else here that there was, um, mm, I don't know what the word is, really. A completeness. Mm hmm There's a completeness. There's a completeness. But you know how in mathematics they have infinities? Yeah. And then you can sort of, you can take an infinity and add one to it, or you can square an infinity. And so uh, there's kind of infinities after infinities. Oh, absolutely. Any, even, you know, any infinity is complete, but then you can square it, or cube mm -hmm. it, or take it to the tenth power. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think there's sort of a correlation here mm -hmm. that, um, you know how holograms work? How uh, you can take a hologram, which is a, basically a laser light shown through a film in such a way as to expo uh, to take a photo of an object in, in sort of 3D. And let's say you, you have a rubber duck that you've made, and, you take it, and you shine a laser through the film and you see the rubber duck, mm -hmm. right? Now you can cut the film in half and shine a laser through it and you still see the rubber duck. Mm. Um, so, and you can uh -huh. cut it in half again, you. and you mm -hmm. still see the rubber duck. So, the rubber duck is there in any portion of, mm -hmm. of the hologram, mm -hmm. a holographic film. Uh, and so, that's a totality, mm -hmm. but then there's a bigger totality, mm -hmm. and a bigger totality. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds absurd in a way yeah. to say bigger infinities or bigger mm -hmm. totalities, but I but think that's experientially that's what anybody's going to find. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's what infinity is, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the great... Um, mantras um, that many Buddhist sects use and it's beyond, beyond, beyond to the other shore. And if we could just keep that constantly going, mm -hmm. there is no place to land, there is no place to stop, and yet there does appear to be a sense of yeah. still abidance right here. Mm -hmm. Marsh used to say, Complete. the goal is all along the path. Ah, uh, you know? yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. words like path and goal and all that, yeah. they, 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 you know, if somebody's just suffering and they just want it to be over with, they, they don't want to hear words like that. I know. They, you know, it's like, get me out of here, I'm done, I'm mm -hmm. done. <laughs> but, um, but when, the f when you're brimming with fulfillment, those words don't have a negative connotation. Not at all. And, and yeah. you know, you, you think, you know, bring it on, more. Uh, yeah. There can be, and you can feel totally fulfilled, mm -hmm. and yet the next day you wake up and there's another sort of wave of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the great good news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and, and this again relates to what you started in talking about, how the spiritual community is mm -hmm. maturing. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe it's maturing into the realization that, you know, it's not a black and white, you know, thing like yeah. you've arrived and you're done. There's, yeah. there's like, uh, to me, that's much more interesting. That there's much more you know, interesting kind of never-ending possibility. Much more yeah. interesting, and I think we become much more open and interested in, in one another. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not so locked or stuck or grasping or, you know, whatever it is that really was starting to. Well, maybe it's always been true in the spiritual communities, but it seemed to really be pretty prevalent in the non-dual. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was a very lovely thing to see it start to yeah. grow up. Well, you know that phrase in the 23rd Psalm, my, my cup runneth over? Mm -hmm. It's like, when your cup isn't full, it's like, leave me alone, I'm trying to fill my cup. You know? That's right. I'm not interested in you. That's but right. once the cup is full, it starts to run over, and then, ah, you, mm -hmm. you know, and you. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have a friend, a very beautiful friend, and, and he's passing, you know, in, in, in transition, and it's exquisitely conscious and beautiful in both him and the community around him. And, um, but he was just saying that, you know, he was saying, you know, I only bought into the spirituality that was all about samadhi and, you know, the silence and um, almost uh, being a hermit, you know, not really wanting to be in relationship or community or, you know, whatever. And um, he said, I have discovered the exquisiteness of this moment and of this bird singing and of the adoration of my wife, which I hardly ever told her, mm -hmm. and just the beauty of the ordinary and all is that, and I'm leaving. <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> Tell him he's not leaving. That's what I said. Well, better late than never, yeah. you know. And, yeah. and and at the same time, just like you said, you know, there. Where would he go? You right. know. But it's just that he just wanted to, sort of. Yeah. Know you know. You but in the famous world take of it Arnold in. Schwarzenegger, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Only he wants to come back this time. Yeah. <laughs> That's another interesting thing. It gets into metaphysics, and, and I don't know the, you know what's what, but I mean, you know, there's some spiritual traditions that say you're like a drop in the ocean, you're just going to disappear, and that you know, when, when you reach enlightenment or something, you're out of here. Who knows? Uh, I have another friend I was talking to you about him before, the interview, Harry Alto, whom I interviewed a couple weeks ago, who says in his experience and his understanding, and he speaks from very deep experience, he's been awake for 65 years, um, the, the, once created, nothing, uh, anything that's created never ceases to exist mm -hmm. ultimately. Yeah. And that we are eternal, not just in terms of absolute being being eternal, but we as, in, as individuals in some well, sense. That's an interesting view. Are yeah. eternal. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So, who knows? Who knows? I, it's not for me to say. No, who knows? Mm -hmm. But there is a, a deep, deep sense and when that silence does actually wake up and begins to permeate through everything and that includes you know before birth that includes through life and that includes after death that, that there is it isn't like a, a a sense of faith it's some recognition of itself yeah some recognitions of its continuance and its constancy and um so you know if there's great people there to greet me that think I'm wonderful and I think they're wonderful, <laughs> fantastic, right? Yeah. If, if it's just, you know, dissolving into that, that, you know, into the suchness, fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember seeing a YouTube video of some yogi in India, I don't know who he was, but he was saying, you know, he said, there was a time when I really wanted to check out, you know, I wanted to be done with the cycle of reincarnation. He said, but now, so I don't care what happens. That's so right. It's, it's in God's hands. Yeah, if he wants me back here, fine. Yeah, you know, yeah, if, if I'm hey. out of here, fine. That's <laughs> right. That's it. That's it. And that's not just this kind of... Uh, no, it's not intellectual. An intellectual kind of sweet thing to say. I mean, it's this actual it. recognition. Yeah. You know it. It's known, but not here. But yeah. Known. No, that's beautiful. And, um, you know, that's. I, I remember when that first came through here of like... You know, if just fix your mic a little bit here. Oh, I'm probably I use my hands a lot. A I um uh you know, I don't want to be homeless. Uh, you know, Sharon would rather be warm and like her comfy bed. But if that was what was happening, if that's where God moved this life, mm -hmm. it would be the very best life possible. Yeah. When that recognition happened, the, the the relief and the letting go and the openness and the then the curiosity and the availability to however it plays out and i'm not saying i'm not romanticizing homelessness but you hear what i'm saying right wherever god is is the best that this possibly could be yeah and if it did happen that you were homeless, you'd probably be trying to figure out a place to sleep and trying to sort out the situation. Well, but you'd be sort of recognizing also that, you know, all is well and wisely put, that will be done. That kind perhaps, of thing. Yeah, yeah, right. And and it would find, you know, such as it would find Christ where it's at. Yeah. 
you know, the crested life, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, I mean, if I'm have a preference, you know, yeah, right. I'd, yeah, I'd rather freezing cold. You not. come in out of the cold. That's right, yeah. exactly. Um, and it's the same way with abundance. You know, it's like it's it's there's something about living in life which is fundamentally abundant that then life becomes abundant whether there's a lot in the bank or whether there's not a lot in the bank it's just life is abundant yeah right it's the actuality of it and so all of the positive thinking and the mantras and and they all can be helpful mm -hmm. but there's a certain point where it's before all of that right it just is yeah it just is Something you said a minute ago really struck my interest. You, you were saying how, you know, there's a knowing mm -hmm. that whatever happens, you know, this presence will continue or something. Yeah. And uh, you can contrast that with believing, where, you know, I believe that I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. Well, it says it in this book. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know the book is true? Well, the book mm -hmm. says it's true. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, something like that. Where, And I think there's an underlying... I mean, some people it might be real visceral knowing, but there could also be a very, in many cases, uh, underlying insecurity because you don't really know it in your bones. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like a living experience. It's more like something you've been taught, taught. and that, that gives you hope, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, kind of makes this bleak world seem brighter in some mm -hmm. way because there's going to be my pot at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. Uh, but it's interesting that you described your experience, and I think it's the experience of many people who are awakening, mm -hmm. that there's a, a deep sense of mother is at home, a deep yes. sense of security. That's right. And mother kind of is at home. R rest and ease and yeah. acceptance of yeah. whatever, whatever may come along because you have kind of be become grounded in something which you know experientially yeah. to be indestructible. There's a verse mm -hmm. in the Gita, know this to be indeed yeah. indestructible by which all this is pervaded. Yeah. None could work the destruction of this immutable being. Oh, you've got a great <laughs> memory. <laughs> <laughs> right on, true. Yeah. Right, it, 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 you know, it resonates through your bones. Yeah. Uh, because it, it recognizes itself. Whatever right. you want to call, silence, love, you know, life, business, suchness, it recognizes itself. Mm -hmm. And there, then all things, faith, hope, falls away. They're superfluous. They're, they're superfluous. Yeah, it's like... And until then, they're helpful. Do I have faith that my hand is here, or is it my experience? There yeah. you go. That's yeah. it. That's it, exactly. So I just want to emphasize, we're talking about experience here. We're not talking about not uh, metaphysical niceties or anything. No. Yeah. And, and they're inspirational, and they're sure. very helpful. I'm certainly not negating it. But, you know, then there's just a certain point that all of that falls away. Yeah. And uh, that's why I think it's so beautiful, because there's a certain kind of whatever you want to call it, maturity that's happening, ripening that's happening, that it's being recognized in this more of a mass way. Mm. And so the authority or the written word or the concepts or the interpretation of the concepts and the written word are, again, they're falling away. It's, it's the actual, it's the actual actualization yeah and that is not to say that written words you know oh. great, great traditions become oh, irrelevant but no, they come no. become more like confirmations rather than uh, something you Perfect. have to sort of Perfect. hang your hopes on or Perfect. believe in or love they, they respect. confirm your own experience they confirm your own experience yeah no i mean i love beautiful poetry and the scriptures, sacred writing yeah. and the scriptures and um great inspiration great respect and 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 for much of my life it it also created this an inspiration and a something to look for or to or maybe recognize when it when it happened yeah. I, I would go oh yeah mm -hmm. that's what that teaching was saying mm -hmm. so i'm not negating that at all yeah. I, it's just the um the actualization of it is so much different than the hope and the faith and the even the inspiration. Yeah, and there actually could be certain scriptures which are actually 
a waste of time to read until your yeah. experience has risen to that level. Yeah. The Brahma Sutras, for yeah. instance, that it's yeah. said that you know, don't even bother with them until you've you totality has begun to yeah. dawn, and yeah. then they the sutras stitch together Brahman for you. Su sutra means actual stitch. Yeah, and ah. they stitch together the wholeness for you. Mm -hmm. Sutra like sutra like you know how a, oh, a yeah. surgeon does sutures. Su sutures. 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 Yeah. Well, that's what this comes from the Sanskrit word sutra, ah, which uh -huh. means like a stitch. So ah. they then when that totality is actually dawning in your awareness, you read the Brahma sutras and the various verses kind of stitch together the wholeness that mm -hmm. is dawning and kind of confirm mm -hmm. it for you. Yeah. yeah, 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 that that was also my experience. It was almost like just a key turned on mm -hmm. and you could just hear what was trying to be expressed. And before maybe there was a resonating, that that was awake within you that just hadn't become conscious resonated right with the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Truth recognizes truth. Yeah but it didn't permeate all the way through mm. and then i just started to notice that i could read the very same thing yeah and it was recognized yeah and like you said then it was just kind of an affirmation right. of what already had taken place yeah so people might be wondering at this point you know we're, we're talking about you know the importance of experience as opposed to belief and understanding so some people might feel like, yeah, that sounds great, but my experience seems deficient. How do I get more experience? You know, I, I want to have it. I don't want to just believe. How do I enliven experience? <laughs> no one ever really likes this response. I, mean, <laughs> I used to hate it. It's to be totally where you are in this moment. Meaning, if there is um, whatever is arising is is to bring the attention and attention is awareness pouring into what's arising be with what's arising right do you do you hear what i'm saying i hear you it's i it's don't think that that instruction would have I been know. sufficient for me i hated it i like i, I, I hated do a spiritual it. practice and, I know. but i think that throughout the day i'd be with what's arising but i if, if that were all i had to do or, or had uh, as a tool i'm not sure if it would have been sufficient for me Here, and, and I think you, you found this in your own life, meditation w was, was a profound, is a profound teacher. Yeah. So it was through meditation that there was an actual felt sense of this presence. Mm -hmm. Right? You yeah. found that? Sure. Right? From day one. So when that started to be recognized and prominent, then the attention started to naturally fall back to more what we call the witness state, mm -hmm. right? Didn't it? Yeah. It just, and then you started to live your life more from that. Mm -hmm. It may go back and forth, but, right. but you really started to see life more in this broader, more open attention, yeah. right? Until it collapsed. So the open attention, if that could be then what is arising, mm -hmm. right? Um, emotional patterns, mental patterns, conditioning, whatever it was, but it was received by this more open witness attention. That's all you would ever need. Mm. There would never be another um, practice or insight that would ever be required because what then would happen was there would be a deeper, more open presence, brighter and brighter. It would see more deeply what was arising and there would be wisdom, insight, love would start to become more prominent because love is the space, is the vastness, right? Is the openness. It all would take place right here. Mm -hmm. But what happens is we look outside of ourselves, we look over here, we look in a book, we look wherever. And so we're literally moving away from just coming back and being 
open, available, right here, with what is. Mm. Um, there's a. But no one likes that, and hardly ever pays any attention. <laughs> so. <laughs> well. There's a, a word in Sanskrit, the hamkara, which, I didn't. which means the eye maker. <laughs> you, you didn't pay attention. You didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. I wanted something much flashier. Well, well there's, this, there's a kind of the description, prescription kind of conundrum here, which is that what you, did, what you just offered was a very beautiful description, a description uh -huh. of a way of being, a, a state of living, a condition which some people are in. Mm -hmm. But I question whether that is necessarily an effective prescription for everyone. It might be necessary to do A, B, and C to you know, arrive at the state where that description begins to fit yeah. your experience. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps. Um, and so you go to an Adyashanti retreat, for instance, uh, and you do a lot of uh, you know, silent meditation during the retreat. And, mm -hmm. and the, the very fact that you're at the retreat is something that mm -hmm. is supposedly conducive to culturing more of that state mm -hmm. that you just described. Well, and then the transmission. And the transmission. The atmosphere is huge yeah. and Not only activates from Adya, that. but the, the, the synergistic group. kind right, of uh, exactly. influence that takes place. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's it's that, that it just gets brighter and more open and it recognizes itself and then, you know, pretty soon the, the, the witness disappears. I mean, the whole thing disappears. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's always just, it's here. Mm -hmm. It's here. It's here. When that really starts to get recognized, yeah. then all the, the informing, the wisdom, the transmutation, the insights, the aha, the, 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 the reorchestration that happens energetically in the body, it all happens spontaneously and automatically mm -hmm. and perfectly. Yeah. But we get distracted. So when you say it's here, it's here, it's here. It's the attention is back here. Yeah, self-referral. It's self-referral. Right, I thought that's what you were it's saying. It's self-referral. Yeah. Because we do this. Because right. the mental patterns are all projected on the screen of consciousness. It's the nature of the and senses. And it's all out here. It's the that's nature right. of the senses to be out or directed. That's right. You know? So you just shift that attention. Yep. If, if we just did that, there would be a huge shift that would go like on. Like a tortoise withdrawing its limbs, as the Gita says. Yeah. Oh, is that it? How yeah. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it, exactly. But, you know, most of us need a little more. Yeah, yeah. It, it does happen spontaneously to some people and whatnot, but whatever, you know, what was that? What John Lennon said, whatever gets you through the night. That's uh, right. You know, exactly. Whatever works. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> it. And you'll find your own dharma that way too, yeah. by listening, right? Won't you? Yeah. So you, you know, know how you were saying in the beginning that there's a tendency to maybe to mature away from this uh, attitude of it's only this or it's only that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. from my perspective as someone who interviews hundreds of people, I, I, I kind of feel like whatever floats your boat, you know, mm -hmm. whatever works. Yeah, you've know. really had that big view of seeing yeah. that. That's beautiful. And so I would never tell any, if someone says, I'm doing such and such a practice and it seems to work for me, I would never say, oh, you shouldn't do that. It's, you know, no, it's, it's just, I would say, great. Go well, for it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, five years from now, they come back and they say, eh, that stopped working. Now I'm doing this. I say, great. You know, yeah. Probably you got everything you could out of that one and exactly. now you're doing this. And again, that can only be recognized if, if you tune into and you're true to that, mm -hmm. right? You, you don't listening to someone who says, well, you know, that's just bunk and blah, 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 do it yeah. this way. But you get, well, thank you very much, but this is what this is Works for me. saying. Yeah. You know, I think that's, what, be true to thine own self. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's really a, and yet, guides, teachers, books, videos yeah. are extraordinary and and the inspiration and um, I don't know how we could do it without them all yeah you know there's that saying some gurus say this they say take one step toward me and I'll take a thousand steps toward you and uh, haven't you found that to be true yeah and I think I it's true, found of, that to of, be true of God in general that's I mean, right you know Christ that's said right. uh, you know knock and, and the door shall be open seek and you shall find mm -hmm. I think that when there's a sincere desire then yeah. that desire is met with whatever is 
useful for you, for, right. the, for this person or that That's person. Right. And God is not a fundamentalist, you know, he's no. not a one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. There are so many, you know, different petals and the variety of flowers oh, in the garden absolutely. of God. And, and so, you know, whatever people are doing, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not only a big world, it's a big universe. The, NASA says there are 40 billion oh, uh, habitable planets in our I galaxy know. alone, and there are billions of galaxies. So who knows how much is yeah. out there and how many different varieties of spirituality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. paths to the universal consciousness. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. You know, here, everything, there was just a certain point that everything became God. Yeah. All voices, whether someone was yelling in my ear, or whether someone was giving praise, oh. or, you know, a clerk, or someone, you know, it's just all of a sudden, and, and I, I remember, it seemed like it was probably happening for a while before there was full recognition, mm. and everything was speaking itself. You know, everything had, had was was the voice of God, mm -hmm. um, and and um, I think it was um, what's his name, Jeff Foster. I think mm -hmm. he, I, I like his writing, and he was just saying that no wave is ever against you, ever, mm. ever. Yeah, it, it's impossible. So the, it's a total shift. It's like you know when we started out saying that you used to learn by suffering, mm -hmm. and now you're learning by love. Mm. Be you're learning by the offering of itself. It's offering itself continuously, right? Yeah. It's speaking itself continuously. And occasionally it will smack upside the head. Oh, well, it? absolutely. <laughs> but again, is that against you or is right. that, you know, like uh, a kid running out and going to get run over and someone runs out and grabs the kid, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's like, stop. Yeah. Listen, right? So that's actually a very unconditionally loving movement of itself. There's a beautiful principle here, which is that, um, and I'll use the word if just to sort of set it up, but you know, if God is omnipresent and omnipotent and omniscient and all that, then there's really nothing other than that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And so like you were saying, everything is the voice of God. Yeah. Um, but also if, you know, now, some people have a hard time even believing in God at all because, you know, Holocaust and, mm -hmm. you know, cancer and all these horrible things that happen. But if we perhaps zoom out just a little bit farther and, you know, see the universe as being this giant evolution machine mm -hmm. uh, in which, you know, the oneness is creating forms through which it can know itself. That's right. And through which it can yeah. have a living it's, experience. It's not personal. Right, through which it can have a living yeah. experience, yeah. then there's a kind of a, an evolutionary purpose at the heart of everything, at the there core is. of everything. And it's a mystery. Right. And but you'll then never nothing know. is arbitrary, nothing is capricious. That's right. That's you right. Know, nothing is accidental, yeah. and nothing is cruel. Yeah. There, I know. I know. If there's life, there has to be death. If there's, mm -hmm. you know, hot, there has to be cold. But it's all kind of part of an overall mm -hmm. expression toward yeah. greater and greater um, yeah. self-recognition of yeah. the divine. And again, you know, that can be so misunderstood and like you said, you know, the Holocaust, how could that ever, you know, be God and, but yet we still think it's, there's a personal God somehow. Mm. And yeah, like some big old dude. In the there is no yeah. <laughs> personal God. Well, there it's is a personal God, but there's also itself. it's you know there are personal expressions of God exactly. to which one can be devoted exactly. and so on. But it's really ultimately one big ocean. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I meant just there's no itself. entity over there, you know, yeah, kind of this is like good and this is bad, right. and if you pray, this will happen, and if you don't, this right, will right, happen, right, right, and right. you know that whole bit, bit about the jealous God and all. Yeah. I don't use God very much. I like to use God because here it's it's a it, there's a very intimate, um, brilliant, wise, loving God is love. Mm -hmm. But I do also honor that there's so much uh, baggage in history that it's an uncomfortable thing. Yeah, there certainly is. But um, I like to use God. The reason Personally. I like to use it is just that uh, <laughs> if you try to use words like consciousness or absolute or words like that, they sound so inanimate. They mm -hmm. sound so dead yeah, in a right. way. I mean, to, but mm -hmm. to me, there's like this 
you know, the creation is just brimming with intelligence. Oh, absolutely. You know? and, and intimacy. Yeah, and so I've... I, it's impersonal and like intimate. a good word yeah, to kind I of know. like Im imply that. Or I know. Yeah, what else can you do? I was glad you were using it. I thought, oh, I can use it all I want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as you define it, you know. As, as long as you're not saying guy in the sky with a lightning bolt. Then, mm. But, you know, this all-pervading intelligence. Yeah, yeah. And that has this evolutionary impulse in, uh -huh. uh, in its nature. And it's love itself. And it's love itself. As yeah. long as you kind of qualify it that way, mm -hmm. then maybe we can use the word. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, it's hard to find the right words, isn't it? I know trying to explain and, and describe, and it's uh, really challenging to find the words that don't just either evoke, like you said, kind of a deadness and an emptiness, and or um, we just become so used to them that they mean nothing. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so words are a real challenge. They are. And they actually, you know, words can really only be used if they refer to something in someone's experience, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we say red, mm -hmm. you know, try to describe it, mm -hmm. but, you know, we know what it means because we've mm -hmm. all seen it if we're not colorblind. Mm -hmm. And so when you say God, you know, unfortunately, for most people, you're describing something that's merely conceptual mm -hmm. and that this or that or the other book or teacher mm -hmm. has given them some idea about, yeah. and there might be a million different ideas out there. Yeah. That's why you have to define it. Maybe we could come up with a new word. Uh, I know, I'd like to come up with a new <laughs> word. Really. I think that'd be great to come up with a new word. Yeah. You know? Huh. And then someone would say, well, as soon as you speak it, it's gone. Yes, that's right. And... Yeah. You know, speaking and describing is an act of love, you know, we're trying to share yeah. that. I mean, this interview would be pretty boring if you and I just sat here with our <laughs> eyes closed and kind of enjoyed <laughs> sort of an inner experience and nobody would watch it. That's right. <laughs> so you have to use yeah, words. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I had a woman and she was just realizing it. I mean, you know, and I really could see that and I honored that. but. You know, it was all about, you know, the, the, if you speak, it, 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 it's separate. And, uh, yes, that's right. And, um, so. And yet, all teachers have spoken, and most of them. I mean, there's some teachers who've, you know, maintained silence or written on a chalkboard or something. And they're beautiful. Or, yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. But, um, you know, most of us, at least at this point, words are it's a loving sharing and you know you're talking about transition transmission with guys like Aja mm -hmm. for some teachers speech is a form of transmission it's mm -hmm. a way of giving yeah. darshan actually yeah through words yeah. yeah yeah and then others I mean here um, that's 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 not the way I mean I, I stumble along and do my best with words but here it is more there's a there's a, a sharing of something. Mm -hmm. And when I would go to teachers, I appreciated the words. But what I really tuned into was the, was the transmission. Yeah. So I was surprised when I started to kind of go out and about that many, many, many people never paid any attention to the transmission huh. and, and, and totally was unconscious of it. Yeah. You know, Aja is one of the teachers, I think, that, that has the brilliance, the darshan comes through the words, but also the mm. transmission is, is really also quite brilliant. I've been going to see Ama for a long time, as yeah. you know, and I go every yeah, year. Yeah. She doesn't speak a word of English. That's right, <laughs> you know, so that's right. I don't right. know what she's saying. That's right. <laughs> but there's this but the transmission. But the transmission, right? <laughs> you know, I walk in the hall, and it's like, you know, I begin <laughs> weeping, you know. So, yeah, that's a beautiful example. Yeah. Nothing is lost. Right. That's just the way and if, that it is. And if Jesus were here, we don't speak Aramaic, but I'm sure we'd get zapped. That's right. Totally. That's by right. his transmission. That's right. Did you ever sit with Papaji? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't either, but I've, I've seen the videos and talked to people, and they would just be weeping, you know, because yeah. of the transmission was so incredibly potent. Yeah, Ramana too. Yeah, yeah. right. So, but, you know, we're wired in the North, I mean, in North America mm. to listen to the word, so sure. we've got to play that game. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, but it is cool. I mean, if... Uh, I mean, there, a lot of people haven't actually sat with a, a great 
teacher, mm -hmm. you know. And if you have the opportunity, you should do it because it's you think, holy mackerel! I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't realize a person could radiate that much mm -hmm. and could fill the room with such energy. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's like wow. This yeah. is so. This is a hint of what a human being could become. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, I've seen um, um, videos of um, Ananda Maha, mm. and. Um, that too you could just sense by watching the video what was happening yeah. within her atmosphere yeah. i mean it must have been really quite remarkable and she would literally lay down and go into samadhi completely disappear and then the whole blessing would could pour out unhindered at all mm -hmm. and um, yeah and you know a good analogy for understanding this is like electricity right i mean electricity is a field and it, that field can be expressed through various instruments. Mm -hmm. You can have a 25 watt bulb, a 100 watt bulb, you can have a powerful searchlight that they use to open, you know, new car dealerships or whatever. Uh, so it's the same electricity, but the transmission yeah. through it, the, yeah. is varies according to the instrument. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain instruments who shine more brightly than others. Yeah. And if yeah. you can sort of be in the company of such an instrument, mm -hmm. then it's a, it's a great blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And hopefully, um, again, the more we mature, that we'll be more and more and more sensitive to that. That's yeah. really what's happening. Yeah. The words are, you know, an act of beauty and love, but what's really happening is this. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know how you're saying with like at a gathering like Ajis or something where it's not only Ajis transmission, but it's the oh, coming together of all those people. There's a mutual reinforcement that takes place. Oh, absolutely. And um, it's that that is awake. That's the same. That's awake in him. Yeah. It's that that's awake here, and we're all sort of singing and resonating together. Yeah. So this mutual reinforcement is is actually a global phenomenon. It's I a mean, global phenomenon. There are some trouble spots for sure. Yeah. But uh yeah. but there is it's happening not only in little clusters but it's happening on a on a larger global mm -hmm. scale. And um so and it's maybe, gonna influence everybody. Maybe the the increased grace, the increased light, whatever you want to call that, the increased treat truth that seems to be happening on the planet, is that that's that's pushing up these what seem to be terrible problems, mm. right? Yeah. Just like when the essential shift happens and instead of this little trickle that goes through the human life that is, you know, not awake t to the wholeness of their being, and then when that wakes up, there's this vastness that starts to move through the life. And sometimes all hell breaks loose. Yeah. I mean, your life goes to, you know, yeah, it, I mean, I've it's known a people disaster. who had a profound awakening and the next day woken up with lupus or exactly. you know, some kind of that's not uncommon. serious situation. Exactly. So, you know, I think that's, that's just the microcosm of the macrocosm mm -hmm. that's going on in the planet. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, it's, it looks edgy. Yeah. But watching the young people come in and the babies, uh. I think it looks like maybe the human species might make it. <laughs> Have yeah. you noticed that? Oh, yeah. I mean, the young people are extraordinary that I've been meeting. Extraordinary. Yeah. I don't maybe meet as many as you, but, um, well, in, in Fairfield, Iowa, there's the university there where mm -hmm. everybody meditates, mm -hmm. and there's a, a preschool and a, a grammar school and, mm -hmm. and everything, and these grammar, they, they just had this um, state science fair competition, right, for the state of Iowa. The two, uh, the top prize in both the two, a the two main age groups were won by students from that little tiny school. Is that right? Yeah, and now they're going, they got a free trip to Los yeah. Angeles for the national competition. But, you know, and I knew one of those kids before when he was in his mother's womb. Uh, mm -hmm. um, there, so there's, the, the school tends to turn out these really brilliant little mm -hmm. souls mm -hmm. um, who are kind of meditating from the age of four and so on. Yeah. And of course, that's just Iowa, but there's, this is happening all over. It's happening all yeah. over. Yeah, I'm meeting him everywhere. Yeah. And um, so, hallelujah. Yeah. So I was there for a while, I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> so don't let the turkeys get you down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if the human species can't get it together, then maybe it's time to go, right? It's not, it's not, it's just that, 
you would rather see the human species be able to flourish on this gorgeous planet. Yeah. And, uh, it looks like it might, it might be. But along the lines of what you were just saying, I think as more and more, and perhaps in an accelerating fashion, mm -hmm. there are certain things which won't be tolerated anymore. That's right. Which don't, which couldn't possibly exist yeah. in a, an enlightened society, whatever that may be. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, uh, really have to somehow cease to exist. Mm -hmm. And that ceasing to exist could be fairly traumatic to those who are deeply yeah. invested in them, yeah. financially or otherwise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure this show is going to get more intense. Yeah. But again, that, that's even more important than to where do you rest? Hold on to the self. That's right. That, that deep sense of stillness and stability, seeing solutions, seeing in others the beauty rather than, you know, what's wrong with them. Um, you know, because then, then that nourishes and feeds the collective. Yeah. And that's the greatest thing you can do, really, for all beings is to um, recognize this and mm -hmm. live from this. It's, it's not a checking out and ignoring the whole thing. It's actually quite the opposite. <laughs> it's just not as visible. <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is that when, uh, when I first learned to meditate in like 1968, I was staying with this family that had seven kids and an Irish wolfhound and a pet raccoon <laughs> and <laughs> a bunch of stuff. And, uh, Can imagine. And, uh, it was really hard to meditate in that house, so there was a tree fort out in the back, and I used to go and climb up in the tree fort to meditate. And they, they composed this song, it was like, uh, you know, hey, hey dude up in your tree, it was sung to the tune of hey, hey dude, dude. <laughs> get out of you and into me. You know, it was like they thought I was being self-absorbed and, you know, sitting there with my eyes closed in my tree house. But, you know, it's really, you know, it's the best thing you can do for the world is, uh, is. I think I've done a lot more for the world than if I hadn't gone up into that tree house and Absolutely. Had remained a drug addict or whatever I was going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's both, excuse me, <coughs> it's both. Um, but until you know the silence, you can't be free. And until you enter the world as silence, you're only halfway home. <laughs> They're getting you some water, so maybe I should fill in until it arrives. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, coming from a high desert mm. to moisture and, and wet wind, and yeah. my system kind of reacts sometimes. Yeah. Well, maybe we should wrap it up since you'd be... Oh, here's some... Thank you so you much. Go. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to just bring up here. I had, took some notes in the car on the way down. Um, well, there's one thing, if you, if you have a few more, yeah, you know, I do. a little bit more steam. Um, I you do. and I were talking about this as we were walking over here. Um, I have this bee in my bonnet about um, kind of litmus tests for realization. I, I, I sort of have this tendency to want to standardize it or define it in a way that can enable people to more clearly understand the stages uh -huh. and, and where they might be and so as not to you know prematurely assume they're done or whatever mm -hmm. and it's helpful it's a map yeah and it, it, it I think we have to kind of keep a little bit flexible with it and not get too right there's you know. always exceptions yeah, yeah exactly um, but for instance this whole idea of remaining pure awareness remaining awake to itself throughout the night during sleep. Mm -hmm. That's one that a number of my friends, I've had experiences of it sometimes, and a number of friends say it's for them been going on for years. Mm -hmm. well, that's an interesting one. Um, and another is uh, this thing of refined perception. We've alluded to it a little bit during this interview. Um, I have friends who say that routinely they see subtle beings all mm -hmm. over the place. Yeah. Uh, whether they're angels or what they are, I don't know, but they seem to be as numerous as human beings in mm -hmm. physical you know, flesh and blood form. Mm -hmm. And so there seems to be this whole dimension of creation that for some people is as real in their experience as the ordinary yeah. dimension. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, I wonder about things like that, whether those sorts of experiences are sort of unique to certain types of people and not necessary not necessary criteria of awakening or whether um, they're that everyone in the ultimate course of their 
evolution is going to progress through stages of experience mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I wonder mm -hmm. if you have any opinions about that. Or would it just be a matter of opinion? I think it's probably just a matter of opinion. You know, like we were saying, depending on how you're wired, um, you know, I've seen angels and beings and all, all my life, but I'm sort of wired that way, mm -hmm. right? But it didn't mean I was awake. Yeah. I just was wired that way. I had senses that were wired that way. Like you might have perfect pitch and another person is bone deaf or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, or, you know, um, so, but what we were saying, when you open to the vastness of being, all of that now is available. Mm. There isn't this little pinpoint, uh, you know, looking through these pinpoint senses, seeing reality. It's like this vast view, and so all of that's available. Yeah. But I think it's according, again, how you're wired. Some really tune in to that and see that, others don't. But maybe Joe Truck Driver, if he somehow gets awakened, maybe his wiring is going to start changing. And it does sooner change. Sooner or later, then he also will have that. Exactly. Kind of, yeah. That, again, has, is my experience, is the wiring does change within, within yeah. your body-mind structure. I'm sure you experience that with, with meditation. I mean, you literally... Oh, I can feel it. You feel it. I can feel the brain exactly. changing. <laughs> yeah. And neuroplasticity. They say the brain does change every it, time you do anything. It, it, and so, you know, all, all, all of that does change. Um, um, I think because of, it's just, it's the vastness. I mean, my teacher used to say, do you want to walk around with this little flashlight in the middle of your head? Or do you want to walk around with a thousand and a thousand and a thousand suns shining? Mm. It's, that's the difference. Yeah. So it, it does, and also I think it's not only your, your past lineage, your, your how you're wired, and so you have certain tendencies, but my sense is too, it's how, and again, we'll use this word, how God wants to express through here. Good one. So if seeing angels are going to assist that, yeah. go for it. That's what's going to happen. Right. If you're going to need this, it's going to wake that up, and it's going, it's going to use that to serve um, to serve all beings. Yeah. So that, that's also my sense, you know, maybe you have a, uh, an ability to write. I mean, you know, I think Aj is exquisite in his poetry yeah, and his writing, but you know, he barely got through the beginning of school, yeah. you know, because of dyslexia. So, you know, who knows? Yeah. But, but this was used, this brilliance was used, is used to, to be of benefit. Um, so that's my sense, but there do seem to be different, um, you know, hallmarks, if you want to call it that. Mm. I know here one of the things that I started to notice was my, my sensing changed. My whole senses woke up. Yeah. And so, you know, if I hear music now, it's like I hear music in like um, quadraphonic, right? Mm. Or if I see, I don't see here, I see here, mm. right? Yeah. So yeah, I think everything changes. Mm. And so you could, you know, p qualify that and put that down. Yeah. But there would always be exceptions. Sleeping, you know, you, you brought that up once before in a, when you were here at the retreat, and I thought about that, and I thought, well, yeah, this, this black, vast, and fathomable, whatever you want to call it, you know, is always prominent. Mm. But dreams happen and sure. thoughts float through, but this is prominent. It doesn't shut off at night and only happen in the day or only, you know what yeah, I'm there saying? You go. Yeah. It's continual. Yeah, so that would be my example of some kind of a litmus test. That's right, you know, it's continual. And in the Sanskrit, they, they call you know, this vast dark thing you were calling Turiya, the fourth, the fourth state. Ah. And uh, you know, waking, dreaming, and sleeping being the ah. first three. Ah. And it's said that when the fourth yeah. wakes up, yeah. then it's there as a continuum it's the while continuum. the waking, dreaming, and sleeping roll Perfect. along. Beautiful. Yeah. That, I would say, is exactly my experience. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what's happening. This personality may be, you know, kind of grouchy, or it may be this, or it may be, you know, whatever, or tired, but it doesn't affect anything. It's just now, it's a configuration mm -hmm. that's passing through the vast being. Yep. And, if, and, and maybe even there's an identity, but the identity is just a configuration that got triggered because there's this appearance. But it doesn't affect anything. Nothing is touched. Sure. Nothing is altered, right? 
if there weren't an identity, they'd have to wheel you around on a gurney. <laughs> there, has to, there has to be that's an identity right, to that's live. That's right. Exactly. That's another know? misconception in the spiritual world that your identity is going to completely vanish or something. That <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the hardest things here to give up was the perfection of the human being. That somehow the human being was going to look a certain way. Because I'd read all the text and all the stories and, you know, the whole thing. And then somewhere along the line, everything has changed, and yet this human being, still a human being, sure. doing her thing, yeah. and uh, and it's not perfect. But that's that's fueling it, that's allowing it to dance and express itself, is. You have a habit that a lot of spiritual teachers use where they, they use the word here a lot. Some, here it is seen that yeah. such and such. It, it, it almost seems like it's an attempt to, to avoid just using the, pers the first person yeah, pronoun. You know, I the way I see it is I duh. It. I know. I kind of forget. <laughs> but that's how it is. It's here. Yeah. Here. And, you know, so I, yeah, you know, yeah. that's... <laughs> I know, it's it's kind of silly when you hear people say that. But they don't um, do it too much. Some some people like, you know, it's like, yeah, this one. Yeah, sees it this way, or I, <laughs> I know it gets I a little. Con it's hard to talk, you know. It's hard to talk, <laughs> and I I like to be, you know, I like to just like we're having here. I just like these really beautiful, rich kind of exchanges. You know, I'm enjoying yeah. you, and I'm enjoying what's happening, and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm. J I mean, and it's not diminished any to any extent by the fact that you just word use the word I a couple of times in that sentence. No. <laughs> yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you would have had to say something like, "Well, here it is being. In, this is being enjoyed, and not by anyone, mind you." But no, no, no. There's no one here. <laughs> no one actually enjoying this. <laughs> somehow, enjoyment is happening. <laughs> there. No, yeah, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> Let me see if there was anything else here. We've covered quite a bit. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing you said in our previous uh, interview. You said uh, teachers often become a lightning rod for everyone's ideas and projections. Boy, that's the truth. What do you mean by that? You know, I just had this conversation with a beautiful man in um, in in where I live, Crestone, and he's a ceremonial leader. And he, you know, he trained for years, and um, and then he trained as a, um, an apprentice for seven more years. And um, so he's he's serious, you know, and he he really has given his life to this. And so we were talking about that, and he said that in his initiation, when that happened, that was one of the vows that you both recognize and you accept that you will be a lightning rod for all the projections and concepts and ideas from those that, that you're serving. And Give me a specific example of you know that happening. People may adore you, mm -hmm. and so this uh, adoration is projected mm -hmm. on you. It, it belongs to what and who, mm. you know? Or people hate you. Yeah. And so they lay all of that on you. Mm. Or, you you know, you've triggered something about their mother, and that's being brought out. And so that's being laid on you. So early on when I figured out that that's what was happening, um, I just thought, well, there's no way that, that you can continue this role unless you just get real, real clean and clear with yeah. this so people can adore me and and that's nice uh, yeah but it doesn't, doesn't go to your head it doesn't go anywhere right it comes in and it moves out yeah. people can hate me you know i'm a human being sometimes i'm confused and of why or there's been misunderstanding yeah. but it it just moves through and so what i started to see by just letting it move through there also was a transmutation yeah so there's actually a service. A transmutation means what exactly? It's burnt up. It for doesn't. For them, for you. Period. Yeah. For them. Yeah, you kind of like. Because you have to let it go in order for it to actually move through you. Yeah. If you hang on to it or believe any of it, yeah. the love or the hate, then it's going to stick, right? And we all know teachers that that has happened to. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just somehow saw early on that. 
you just it, it just had to be it had to be just like the wind it just had to move through mm. but then I also saw that by nobody there except just this sort of open awareness that then it could lighten it up it could actually transmute it mm -hmm. now that can be accepted or not that's none of your business yeah. so um, but it's just the way it is you just and that's what happens and I can remember being quite um, shocked about it because with with my teachers I mean Anjo is 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 the beloved I mean I you know I embarrass him because I <laughs> love him so much and appreciate him so much um, so that's I didn't really project but I noticed people in the Sangha, you know, they, they would project certain things and certain ideas and disappointments and this, you know, like he was saying one time that um, he gets all of these emails about people saying, well, I know that, you know, you didn't call on me because, oh, and that just goes on and on and on. He said, I don't think anything. Right. It never even comes up. Yeah. I just see a hand and I go there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, the projection. Yeah, there is actually some kind of cosmic computer going on. There, there is. Which causes him to call on that hand. There is. Yeah. But it's not because he likes him or he doesn't no, like no, him or, personal you know, proclivity. it's, no. no. And, and so you just start to, to see that um, it's, it's the openness and the allowance of that and not buying into any of it. And if it does trigger something, then see what here still yeah. wants to, 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 to be loved, to be seen, to be made aware. So it can dissolve, right? Yeah. So it becomes uh, a gift if there is a trigger. Um, to to free it up, but I found that in most cases it just flies through. But it wasn't just an exercise for me. I realized it was for the whole. It was for the sangha. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting because we were walking over here and um, we were talking about how many teachers there seem to be out there yeah. these days. Maybe a couple thousand. Yeah, here, that's what I heard. Time. I don't know if it's true. Um, and when you take on the role of a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you do take on the, some karma uh, for you what, do. what you're doing. You do, and I never really bought into that. You become that. like a washing machine. There uh, you go. Yeah. There you go. And you better be ready to do that. You better be ready to and do that. And if you're not ready to do that, you know. Leave. Yeah, there have been problems. There have been problems. Yeah. And they're, they're actually um, fairly frequent. Yeah. Pretty frequent. Which is why I don't get up and, well, well you and I, you're talking about this too. You're saying mm -hmm. maybe you should teach, and mm -hmm. I was thinking... I just don't feel qualified, I, yeah. and maybe I am qualified. Maybe I'm more qualified than some maybe people who are, are out there but teaching. But for right. me, yeah. I feel like it's not my role. And, and yeah. uh, it's good. To, it's good to see that we yeah. need. I think we need. We need more examples of living in the world in the way that you are, and and the vast numbers that you serve by your willingness and your generosity of your time, of your resources, of everything else. Just the service that you have brought. I'm the um, prime beneficiary, you know. Well, we it's always like, are. I love it, you know? We always yeah, are. It's so fulfilling. But you know, it's not like a sacrifice, or well, yeah. you know, it, it's you're giving. Yeah. Um, and the benefit is 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 tremendous. Um, but I think that we need a little more examples of that, mm. because for a long time we didn't have any other model other than, you know, you woke up and you taught. Yeah. Because that's what they always did, you know. Yeah. And um, so we need many, many, many more examples of living life, living your Dharma perfectly, yeah. whatever that is. And there's a saying in uh, the Gita, again, it's the verse goes, because one can perform it, that's a mm -hmm. key phrase, one's own Dharma, though lesser in merit, is better than the Dharma of another. Better is death in one's own Dharma. The Dharma of another brings danger. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get out the lot, Gita there's again. There's a lot in that little verse there. Because <laughs> uh, it can be dangerous if, if mm. one is sort of taking on a Dharma that one is not yet capable of It could be very performing. dangerous. Dangerous for very... you, dangerous for those who gravitate toward you. Absolutely. Yeah. And we see many, 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 many examples of it. Yeah. So. So humility. Bottom line. <laughs> and gratitude. And gratitude. And perhaps, and with gratitude point, 
always sort of recognizing that there's someone to whom you can look up or mm -hmm. that to, to whom you can be a student. You know, no matter oh. no matter how good a teacher you may oh. think you are, uh, if you I don't see so anyone grateful. higher than you or you know more qualified in some way, then that could be dangerous. I think very dangerous. Yeah. I am so grateful. Um, both you know this this inner this inner teacher <laughs> that's constantly awake, but to have this beautiful also outer teacher mm, yeah. and um, such an example and he's so generous and so willing and so available. Yeah. And, um, I am more grateful than less in all this time. So three cheers for Adyashanti. Three cheers for Adyashanti <laughs> and for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm, you're welcome. I'd hug you but our mics would go <laughs> <laughs> so let me make a few concluding remarks that I always make at the end of every interview, uh, just to put it all in context. Um, I've been speaking with Sharon Landreth. I'm looking forward to <laughs> this weekend retreat with her. Maybe we'll have a couple of follow-up questions at the end. I don't know. If this has been pretty thorough, so maybe not. But uh, if, if so, we'll splice them in here. So the retreat is over, and I just wanted to tape a couple more minutes because there are some things I wanted to add, maybe Sharon wants to add, and some things that maybe need a little clarification from the main body of the interview. Um, one was that I made the comment uh, it, towards the beginning of the interview that after my last retreat with Sharon, I had stopped picking my fingers for six <laughs> months. And I, afterwards I thought, that's going to sound weird. You know, it sounds kind of <laughs> trivial. but. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a habit I've had for 60 years. It's just tapered off to a great extent, but it's symptomatic of some underlying agitation or something. And exactly. uh, I thought it was yeah. kind of cool that I just stopped cold turkey yeah. after that exactly. last retreat. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and I also didn't want to give the impression that because I'm here on a retreat with Sharon that I'm giving some kind of exclusive endorsement to Sharon. I mean, <laughs> God the, forbid. <laughs> there are probably a lot of people whom I've interviewed with whom I'd love to spend time on a retreat or, or whatever and would, would benefit from it. But um, as you may have been able to tell from our conversation, I think Sharon and I have a sort of a resonance and mm -hmm. a mutual understanding of things, a common affinity mm -hmm. for the way we tend so. to see things. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I've really enjoyed this weekend. I just want to say that uh, I think that Sharon is a, a very mature spiritual teacher and by that I don't mean white hair and a few wrinkles. <laughs> um, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean that um, she's kind of like an ocean into which all rivers and streams can enter, whether large or small, pure or impure. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. here we had a, a group of 20 people or so from very different backgrounds, different ages from 20s to 80s, um, some with a Hindu background, some a Christian, some a Buddhist, some perhaps none. And uh, we all felt like family, you know, there was just mm -hmm. this sort of um, yeah. affinity that uh, we settled into very quickly. And I think Sharon facilitated that very nicely. Um, I also ne neglected to mention um, during the main part of the interview that, um, you know, as always, I link to people's websites from their page on BatGap, and I'll be linking to Sharon's website. And if you go there, you'll see something about dokusans, and you might not know what a dokusan is, so I thought I might invite Sharon to explain mm -hmm. what that is. You know, from this, this view anyway, it's a beautiful way to, you know, what it really means is just private interview. And so it's a beautiful way to have this quite intimate conversation and um, just through many, many, many years of looking in that way, often we can see certain patterns, we can see where perhaps um, there's an imbalance, you know, within, within the awakening. Um, unfolding. So it very much is a way to um, really almost like a surgical scalpel kind of a thing. You know, we can go in and look deeply and um, um, provide that mirror and it can, can be recognized and, and, and therefore freed up. So I think it's a very valuable uh, way to um, explore your, your deepest nature. 
I'm really quite grateful to have the opportunity. And, you know, of course, with the phone and uh, the internet, it's uh, really very simple. We talk to people all over the world. So, uh, yeah. it's and unlike a scalp where there's no bleeding or pain. <laughs> yeah, it's painless. <laughs> so anyway, just wanted to add that, uh, those little things to the inter interview. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we conclude? I am so grateful to you and what it is that you have been giving so really selflessly and enthusiastically and with impeccability. You have served so many, and it continues to do so. Um, I'm deeply touched by that, and I talk to people all the time that literally their lives have been changed because of that gap. Thanks. And it's your vision and your heart that drives it. So thank you. And it's not selfless. I mean, I'm the prime beneficiary. I just love it. You know? So it's yeah, like it always it's, is. It's my sustenance. Yeah, it'll. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. always receive yeah. more than actually you get. Yeah. But thank you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> but in any case, um, this interview has been one in an ongoing series. There are a couple, 225 or other ones, that mm. you can find if you go to batgap.com, B-A-T-G-A-P. You'll find there a, an alphabetical index, a chronological index. We're actually working on a geographical index. Need a volunteer to help with that, actually. Uh, so, you know, because I get emails from somebody in Poland saying, where's the closest teacher that you've interviewed? I say, I don't know. So I want to oh, like to have a geographical beautiful, index. Yeah. You know, Sharon would be Colorado and other yeah. places you go. Yeah. Um, and it'll also include whether they do Skype interviews and uh, Skype you know, consultations uh -huh. and all that. So you can just sort of look at it geographically. Brilliant. Um, th there's some other things on the site there. There's a um, discussion group or forum, and each interview has its own little section with, that is linked to from the page of that interview. Uh, there's a donate button. Um, this is a, our Buddha at the Gas Pump is registered as a 501c3, which means it's a nonprofit organization. and uh, Donations are tax exempt. Uh, I don't understand all the finances, but uh, donate. Yeah, <laughs> but I do need the finances. Um, then uh, there's a place to be to sign up to be notified by email uh, each time a new interview is posted. You'll only get about one email a week because that's as many interviews as I do. Uh, and then there's a link to an audio podcast, so you can subscribe to this in iTunes and. Every time a new interview is posted, iTunes will it'll automatically come into iTunes. You can put it on your little i thing and listen to it. Mm -hmm. So that about covers it. Um, go to the site, check it out. There's some other menus with some other tidbits there. So thanks for listening or watching, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see you next week. Next week is going to be a fellow whom I'm just getting. Uh, actually, next week is going to be Prajna Ginti, who is also oh, a uh, student like of Ajya yeah. and uh, had a profound awakening and mm -hmm. then gave birth to premature twins and her life became very difficult and it's really interesting to see how the rubber met the road in terms yeah, of, big how, time. you know. So stay tuned for that and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you. Mm, that was fun. I always yeah. like talking with yeah, you. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, we, we really roll, don't we? We really roll. <laughs>